Today, I want to talk to you guys about router bits. Now, if you're here to see what kind of router bits I use or what router bits I use most often, stick around because that's what we're going over today. I use router bits on almost every single project that I work on. And the five that I have in front of me right now are the bits that I use most often. Now, I might not use these exact bits, but I use a bit in their style or a bit that's similar to these five. And today, I wanna to talk about those five bits. So I'll start with the flush trim bit. Now, the flush trim bit has a bearing on the bottom or the top. This is a bottom bearing trim bit and it has straight blades on the bit. Now, these are really great for template routing. I like using the straight bladed bits when I know that I'm not gonna to have to worry about hair out. If I'm routing anything that goes against the grain or that's on end grain or that might tear out i tend to go with a combination up down bit but we can go over that here in a minute these bits are excellent at getting really flush template routing done as long as you're working with a template that has a very clean edge these bits will work wonders for you. So our next one is a combination bit. Combination flush trim bit has a bearing at the top and a bearing at the bottom. The top bearing and bottom bearings are great depending on how big your workpiece is or how your piece goes in the router table. Sometimes I use them in a hand router or a palm router. Most of the time I'm doing template routing with the router table. And with these types of bits, because the bearing is at the top and the bottom, I can place my template either on the top of the workpiece or on the bottom of the workpiece. And most of these combination bits, if not all of them, come with the small screw in the top that's usually an allen key so you can remove that top bearing and just use this as a straight bit and these are great bit that you may need to acquire over the course of a project so next i'm going to go into a 45 degree chamfer bit um they lighten the look of different pieces of furniture by putting a chamfer on the bottom edge of like maybe a tabletop or a seat bottom they're all top bearing uh you set these inside the router table and, you know set the height of how large the chamfer you want to get from your bit the chamfer bits that I have, you know, range in from 22 and a half degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. So depending on what you're working on, you may need a different chamfer bit. But I would say starting with a 45 degree chamfer bit, that'll set you up for 95% of the woodworking that you do. But if you have a favorite chamfer bit, let me know down in the comments. All right, so the next bit that I wanna talk about is the round over bit or the rounding over bit. A round over bit is great for softening the edges on things like the tops of tables or the, uh, you know, the tops of chairs, something where people are going to be touching it a lot. I and mean, you don't want that really hard edge to, to come in contact with the skin and you know cut somebody potentially. That is a nice way to add a little style to the edge profile of a piece. And sometimes you can break the edges with sandpaper or a rasp or something like that. But the problem you run into is that not all of those edges are consistent all the time. So using something like a round over bit gives you consistency across your entire project. And it's really nice to have that consistent look across the entire piece. Now, rabbiting bits are great for setting in panels on the backs of furniture, like a credenza um, or an entertainment center, or I recently used them on the back end of some dressers. And you know, they're a nice way to put in a cabinet back as well. If you're looking to inlay a panel into a set of doors or something like that, a rabbit bit might be a good option. One other bit that I want to discuss is this combination up-down spiral cutter head um, from Whiteside. Now this one is also sold by Bits and Bits and you probably have heard of them. They put this Astro coat on the outside of the bits. It really reduces burning and it makes the bits last a lot longer. But this bit will do anything that these two bits can do plus a bit more. And that goes for most of these bits. Not all these bits are gonna be the solution to every problem that you have in the shop. There's tons and tons and tons of router bits out there. So if you know what you're looking for and you have a specific need for that bit, just purchase it as you get to that part of the project. Don't think that you need to have all of these bits right away to get started. And that's about it guys. So hit subscribe, watch this next video, and don't forget to give this video a like. I'll see you next time.